The Niger Delta Development Commission says it is ready to embrace clean energy sources through practical nature-based solutions and green innovation. Managing Director Samuel Ubuku made this statement on the sidelines of the COP20 Climate Summit in Dubai. Ovietemi George reports. The advent of oil production has had its negative impact on the Niger Delta region due to unprecedented oil spillage for over five decades. Heavy contamination of the air, ground and water with toxic pollutants is often a subject of medical concern. The Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Niger Delta Development Commission attends the Conference of Parties. He speaks on the theme, Green Innovation for Climate Resilient Development in the Niger Delta Region, a credible approach to net zero target. We are trying to partner with organizations like ZOE to see how they can also help in telling our stories for the global world to understand what we are passing through because we have also tried to comply with the Paris Agreement by investing so much in solar energy. Recently, if you go to most of the communities in the Niger Delta, we are providing solar energy. And we hope that with this investment, we are also going to get carbon credit for most of our investment because we see such investment as both economical and social investment. We want to be a partner with you. I think as I saw the presentation that there's a number of things that we will be able to assist and help uh, with carbon credits, with technologies to be able to help in the Niger Delta and we look forward to that opportunity. The partnerships in order to enhance the access to carbon credits, I want to say that the Ministry of Niger Delta in its supervisory role of the NDDC is fully behind this. Climate finances and clean energy are also discussed at the Nigerian Pavilion. The attention of the Niger Delta Commission, which is already doing enough in terms of human capacity development, should be geared towards enhancing the capacity of our young people, learning new skills, and empowering them enough to be able to adapt to the new changes Nigeria needs in terms of our movement towards renewable energy. How will NDDC benefit from carbon credits among our experts that is here, so that some of the projects they have invested on could be reinvested in developing capacity and more projects to combat climate change. While we are waiting on the climate fund to be funded, there is much that we can do. We can develop programs that are going to create carbon credits by you reducing your CO2s to the atmosphere. Whatever activities we are carrying out should be green energy compliant because we're going to have a desk in our EPC directorate where even our contractors will be subjected to such uh, compliance. From early next year, NDDC want to invest heavily on about 1,000 youths to be trained on conversion, conversion from fuel to gas engine, because we also want them to be involved in this whole uh, green energy process. Ufietime George. Arise News. Joining us now is Dr. Samuel Obuku, Managing Director, Niger Data Development Commission, NDDC. Well, Dr. Chief Samuel Obuku, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the morning show. Good morning. Well, uh, you know, the uh, main subject is about your presentation at COP28, about NDDC embracing uh, clean energy, um, how do you intend to do that? Have you started, or this is just a wish? Uh, but the other more important question I would like to ask you, beyond the uh, climate change, because everybody that went to Dubai said more or less the same things, whether state governors or central bank governors or whoever. We'd like you to give us an account of what you've been doing as managing director of NDDC, a body that is much criticized for underperforming and for disappointing the people and for embracing controversy as if it is a garment. 
Well, I think, um, let me say thank you for your questions and uh, most of the things you have said, well, it is a perspective that I will not also agree with. But for the conference of party at Dubai, I think we went there to also show our stance on uh, accepting uh, investments in renewable energy. Um, we went there to tell our story as people of the Niger Delta to let the world know the impact of which, you know, um, uh, crude oil exploration and gas flaring has uh, caused in our environment. Because we believe in Nigeria, we are the most affected in terms of uh, issues of climate change. Because uh, the impact of crude oil and uh, uh, gas exploration has actually eroded our environment. Most of our communities are now even uh, uh, deserted because of uh, uh, urban migration. Because people can no more fish, people can no more farm. So people have to look for other means of survival. And we as a developmental agency, we know that yes, the federal government set up the NDDC to mitigate that. But in mitigating that, we also have to look at also permanent solutions. And in using permanent solutions, we cannot just keep um, using a, a, a window dressing solutions. We have to look at permanent solutions. So recently, we have also invested hugely in the area of uh, solar light for our communities. One, it has reduced the issues of criminality in most of these communities. And we thought it is both uh, economical and social investment because our uh, going to the COP is to also see how we can also get carbon credit for this investment so that we can also reinvest most of this fund in other developmental areas in the region. So going forward in NDDC, we're also looking at the environment too because we have also done a lot of shore protection in the Niger Delta and we have also studied to understand that most of the sheet pile uh, short protection we're doing is not sustainable. Looking at the uh, the environmental challenge, because the sheet pile we come we've come to realize that it's also distorting the environment because it also affects the under uh, under under water current movement. So we're now looking at uh, using uh, geotubes because geotubes does not also distort the under water current. It rather uh, uh, rebuilds the land because if you want to do sheet pile that means you're also ending where the erosion uh, has cut most of this land from because we're having issues of uh, uh, ocean surge in most of our communities you go to brass you go to akasa you go to uh, 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 escravos areas we're having serious problems you go even in their own state we have those problems so we are looking at the new technology of using geotubes so that these lands can be reclaimed naturally and so that it can be permanent. So we are doing a lot. Um, trying to also uh, subject most of our contractors to also be compliant to uh, uh, issues of uh, climate change. Then to also ensure that we also benefit from the renewable energy campaign, we are also trying to see that from early next year, we uh, engage about 1,000 youths in uh, conversion to CNG or to mobile so that at least you know our youths can also be engaged in the area. I want to train them and also equip them so that we can have a hub of a CNG conversion in the Niger Delta to ensure that these youths are properly engaged. And we know that from there we can also outsource them to other parts of the region, other, other regions in the country. Then um, we're also looking at next year starting massive um, uh, tree planting campaign for afforestation of our region because we also have to look at afforestation of our mangroves because our, we've lost most of our mangrove which is our uh, natural environment so we have to look at all that so recreating our environment is also very very necessary because you know by the time we go into massive afforestation massive planting of uh, uh, trees we know we know that um, with that we can also get uh, more uh, carbon credit for that, so that is what we are trying to do in NDDC vis-a-vis -vis the COP28. All right, well, thank you very much for explaining and detailing uh, what your plans are. Perhaps I'd like to dial back and ask you, um, I, I know you've illustrated some of the initiatives by the NDDC to tackle effects of climate change. And like you rightly said, uh, the Niger Delta region has been 
significantly impacted by the effects of you know, gas flaring and the likes. In terms of COP28, what were some of the significant partnerships that began from your attendance? I know there was a sideline event hosted by the NDDC. Did you achieve any success? And could you detail these successes, if any? Yeah, I think we achieved a lot of success because you know, we have a consultant in uh, the, uh, uh, the company of A. Stevens Group who also coordinated most of our events. And we are also trying to go into partnership with the National Council of uh, Climate Change so that we can also tackle the issues of gas flaring because we had to make it clear that the issue of gas flaring shouldn't just be an issue of uh, lip service during the conference of party. It should be issue of action because, you know, gas flaring is still ongoing in Nigeria. So, and um, most of the people that are perpetrating gas flaring are not Nigerians and they're not Niger Deltans. And, they are companies from the uh, countries who are actually promoting the, 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 the Paris uh, Agreement of 2015. So for us, I think we achieved because we are also signed partnership with uh, companies that are going to work towards getting carbon credit for the NDDC based on our investments, which I think that is a very huge achievement. And most of them are very, very much interested to ensure that, yes, they come and assess most of our investments in, uh, in renewable energy and also for us to get the carbon credit. Above all, at least we've been able to tell our story and they are willing to assist us in the region. Okay. So a lot of people argue that the NDDC led a contingent to COP. But people argue that that's the hypocrisy of COP because you people just increase carbon footprints with the flight going there and coming back. That those conversations could have been led here rather than leading the contingent to Dubai, increase carbon footprint from flying and coming back and the issues remain the same. I'll tell you some of the issues. There is a massive level of deforestation going on now occasioned by coal fire, because most of the forest cover in the Niger Delta region is fast going because of illegal refineries and things like that. Also, the climatic problem, the pollution in the Niger Delta region, and many other problems. You've talked about some of the ways you're going to solve some, but where are you going to get the money from to be able to implement this actionable action? And is it part of your budget? Is there a budget component? And tell me how much is going to cost line by line item for the things you're going to do for climate change. How much is it going to cost? And tell me where you're going to get the money from. Well, I think we're preparing for our 2024 budget. So I think these are issues like if you had me, I said next year. I said next year. I did not say 2023. No, how much 2023 has come to an end. We are, very, we, are, we are preparing towards a new budget for 2024. So in 2024, we're also going to capture all these investments because they say charity begins at home. For you to start looking at someone else coming to invest in your area to also solve your problems, you also have to start. You have to start doing something for them to know that you're serious. And that is why I said we're going to start with massive tree planting campaign. And apart from massive tree planting campaign, we also want to tap into the benefits of um, renewable energy to train our youths in preparing them for the future. So I think starting with massive tree planting campaign is also starting. I am not talking about the federal <coughs> government also have their role to play in the Niger Delta. But for us as NDDC, we must also start doing something. And we have also made contacts with companies that are willing to come, but they cannot also come without you doing something. But they have also advised us on what to do. So these are the things we want to start with. Like tree planting campaign is also very, very good for our environment. Like so we have done a lot of investment in solar energy, which we have done a lot of investment in solar energy, which I told you earlier. So I think with that, we have also started. Most of our communities today are little bit solar uh, power. Okay. So solar power, tree planting campaign is also a good way to start. Okay, how many trees do you want to plant every year? And how much is it going to cost the NDDC? 
Well, the truth is that, sir, I think it is something we want to do, and our consultants and our department, our directorate of EPC, they are working towards that. And once they conclude... So you guys don't know how many trees you want to plant every year now? You don't know as we speak? Um, what's the target, like a range of the number of trees you want to plant every year? Sir, I think the truth is that we have nine states to cover. We are not talking about just Port Harcourt. We are not just talking about just Yenegua. We are talking about nine states, and not just the state capital. Sometimes these activities are not even just impacted in the state capital. Like in Ondo State, where you have gas flaring, it's not in Akure, it is in the in Laje area. So we cannot just start saying that this is what we want to do in Ondo State. We need proper data and we need proper statistics. So I cannot just sit down here and tell you this is what we want to do. I've already told you we've engaged consultants and our directorate of EPC is working very hard on that. So once that is out, the details will be out there in the public for you to see. I asked you a question earlier on which you avoided. And NDDC has been in the news. You were first managing director uh, under the Buhari administration. Then the uh, uh, Tinubu administration has, brought, has kept you in that position, which shows that, you know, quite a number of people have confidence in your abilities. But we're not in the business of serving ice cream. NDDC is one of the most controversial bodies to the extent that at a point, people were calling that it should be scrapped because it was not serving the purpose of the people that it was supposed to serve. And I wanted you to tell us, what are you doing to rebuild trust and confidence in that particular body? And to allay fears, that is just a, a, a commission for awarding contracts to cronies. What have you been doing? You said it's a matter well, of perspective. It's not perspective. We, do, we want to know. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that question. You see, the truth is that we are working towards, you know, uh, salvaging that uh, perceived image of NDDC. Because NDDC, I can tell you, NDDC have done a lot in the past, only we've not been able to tell our stories. Unfortunately, the negative stories have overshadowed the positives in NDDC. But however, what we are doing differently is building the right foundation. And in building the right foundation, right now I can tell you that we are trying to ensure that we institute a proper corporate governance structure in NDDC. We have engaged KPMG to design our internal corporate governance system and also set up SOPs for us in NDDC, which is also going to internally regulate us. And once that is done, I think most of these stories you will not be hearing. That means these SOPs will cut across all our engagements and we're also trying to build compliance because we are trying to engage with international organizations and they want to see that we can be compliant to most of their, their policies. And that is why we engage a reputable firm like KPMG, internationally recognized, to come and design all this. And once once that is done, I'm telling you that NDC will not be the same NDC you used to know. These structures were not there before, so anything goes. So in order to align with the policy of the present government that is visionary to ensure that the Niger Delta is prosperous and economically sustainable, we are trying to put the right building blocks to ensure that, yes, the foundation is strong. And for that foundation to be strong, we need to ensure that we have a proper corporate governance structure that will make NDDC to be competing internationally and the right SOPs that will also organize the uh, 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 regulators internally. And we have a new board, a new board that is chaired by a chairman that is of class, someone that is well experienced. We have board members that also have experience from the areas of uh, the legislative and even executive. So I know that, yes, the people of the Niger Delta will not have any cause to complain by the time we are properly settled. And these are the things that we are already doing. Our engagement with KPMG is for 15 months. They are already working in our head office. And by the time they come up with their policy document and we all abide it and we start going, all, all, all what has been thrown at us, if it is not something that NDDC can carry, it will be thrown out because the system will automatically reject it. That is what we want. And even most of the external influences will not also work anymore. So I think we just need to put the right structure. 
and that is the structure we are putting in place right now. Dr. And once we do that, most of these complaints will not be there again. Dr. Ogoku, will I be correct to say that NDDC under your watch, everything is still in the pipeline? So when those things come out of the every, every, NDDC under my watch, everything is not in the pipeline because if you want to talk about administration, today I can tell you, you can even ask our staff, everything has changed. They say, we, just like I also repeat again, charity begins at home. We have to ensure that we reorganize the administrative structure of NDDC. Before I came in, NDDC administratively, all the, almost, in fact, with my first uh, management meeting, we had over 40 directors. And the NDDC Act recognizes only 11 directorates we've been able to prune it down to the normal uh, directorates that are uh, uh, approved by the act just to ensure that we have a smart administration and also ensure that uh, who becomes <coughs> the head of every directorate is based on seniority and not political and uh, experience too we are trying to ensure that we put our uh, administration, our administrative structure in place properly. So we need to build the foundation properly. Everything is not the same. Everything has changed. Today we have partnership from uh, NLNG in terms of developing the Niger Delta. We have uh, 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 total energies that has also come to us for partnership. The IOCs are coming back to partner with NDDC. It is because they've seen that things have changed. So we are trying to ensure that there's accountability. We are trying to ensure that there's transparency. And they have seen this transparency and accountability. That is why they are going back to us for partnership. These are not government agencies. They are international agencies that are coming to us for partnership. So I can assure you that things are not the same. We are trying to do things the right way. They have seen it. That is why they are coming to us. All right. Well, thanks. Um, thank you, Dr. Buku. Let me ask, I'm not sure you had responded to the question with regards to how, what, where the source of financing will come from, because you have really great plans, especially with regards to embracing clean energy following your COP28 appearance. Um, you also talked about what you do, uh, planting up trees. You talked about solar panels in some of the communities in the Niger Delta. So in terms of the larger, the bigger plans for 2024, where are you looking to source the funds from, um, if you have an idea of how much will be spent? And then the second thing, you say you're currently working on your budget. What would be the top budget priority areas for the NDDC come 2024? Well, our budget priority will be based on infrastructural development because we did massive infrastructural development. Most of the major roads in the Niger Delta are bad. So our major concentration will be on infrastructural development. So that is not something we have to negotiate. Because without these infrastructures, you will not also attract investment too. So we want to ensure that we put our infrastructures in place. But for where the funds will come from, NDDC is self-funded. Because one, we have our monthly allocation from the federal government by the Act. Then we're also having uh, contributions from the IOCs. So those are the areas and we also have the ecological fund that comes in. So these are the areas we look, at, look up to for our funding. All right, so let, let me rephrase the question. Funding, that is what... Let me rephrase the question. So what I meant, for the funding, I understand the source of NDDC's funding itself. I'm talking about the um, embracing clean energy because I know that part of you going to COP28 was to seek partnership and to look for investment, to attract investment, to be able to achieve your um, transition to clean energy. So I was asking in that regard as to um, these plants that you've made, the planting of trees, would that still come from the NDDC budget? And then the other area with regards to your budget priority areas, yes, you will, you will in, invest in infrastructure. Can you be a bit more specific? As the MD, you should be able to tell us at least what areas, what infrastructure you're looking to build in 2024. Well, I think uh, in terms of the funding, just like as you said, I believe maybe your request here asking about external funding. We, you know, we, we just we just try to flag off our PPP and we go into a lot of PPP. We also try to ensure that for these investments, we also try to partner most of these IOCs who are coming into partnership with us because uh, for the IOCs that are coming into partnership with us. We also partner to achieve this because the environment, we share a common environment. Then, just like as I said, our investments that we've invested so far, 
we are trying to get carbon credit for those investments. Whatever we recoup from this carbon credit, we'll also reinvest it again in the, in, uh, the, the renewable energy uh, infrastructures. But for what you have said, specifically on our projects for 2024 budget, we want to invest on our infrastructure. Most of the infrastructures we are going to invest on is roads. We have regional roads that we need to take care of. Roads linking the states and the Niger Delta. Like for Delta State, we have a, the, a major project we want to embark on, which is the Warri S. Travers Road, which we are discussing with Chevron to see how they can partner with us to achieve that road. So we are trying to see that these roads, yes, we are not talking about one kilometer roads. We are talking about major roads. We want to uh, complete the Okrika Brokery Bridge project, uh, which links Port Harcourt to Okrika Island that takes you to Eleme. It's okay. a shorter cut for those going to Bori okay. and other places. We want to complete that project. It is key to us in 2024. We also want to ensure that, yes, the Warriors Travels Road, let us tidy up our agreement with Chevron. We have gone to the advanced level in our okay. discussion. Then other areas, the, even in Ondo State, Ondo State in a place like uh, uh, Aetu that has a shore uh, uh, ocean, ocean surge, we want to see how we can also handle those, those, those projects. Okay. Because these are massive projects we are looking at infrastructurally. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Samuel Obuko, real quickly, I'd like to know what happened between you and your former chairman, Loretta Onoche. She accused the MD, that was you, of operating 367 illegal accounts. I want you to talk more as regards what happened between you and Loretta Onoche as your chairman of any decision. Well, well, and sir, do you I operate 367 illegal accounts? I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't account? want to delve into... Well, well, sir, I think uh, the truth is that you also know that NDDC operates TSA, so I don't think CBM will allow any uh, government So, was she lying? No, I just want you to clarify. Account. Is so, it true or false that you operate 367 illegal accounts? True or false? So, let's just get a clarification. Watch, I'm not, on the DC under my watch, I'm not aware NDDC had that much number of accounts. Maybe she has to tell us where the accounts are, but I'm not aware of such number of accounts. Sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate you for your time. Uh, just before we go, I don't know whether we still have much time. Uh, you are talking about Niger Delta. The Joy Youth Congress is also talking about uh, the same things. Is there some synergy between NDDC and the Joy Youth Congress? Quickly. Because I saw Lokobiri in the video that was shown earlier. Well, I think um, the truth is that we all have to synergize to ensure that the Niger Delta is developed. If we all have a meeting point, and it is good for all of us. It brings about understanding, because as part of Asuaju's uh, present, Asuaju's uh, uh, policy, we talk about stakeholders' engagement. So we are willing to partner with all stakeholders. And uh, by, by early next year, I've discussed with my chairman, we are going to have a stakeholder summit in the Niger Delta, so that we look at at least the new challenges in the Niger Delta because the master plan of the NDDC has also expired. So we have to look at having a new master plan that also conforms with the new challenges we have. Because when the master plan <coughs> was designed, we didn't have the kind of flooding okay. situations we have today. So okay. we have to have that stakeholders engagement to also look at all this. Okay. And possibly also look at if the act needs to be uh, amended to serve the people better. So these are the things we are trying okay, to do. I just wanted so to know whether engagement I, is I just wanted key. to know whether it was NDDC that sponsored the Joy Youth delegation to Dubai. Uh, that was where no, I was no, going. No, no, no. They were there on their own. On their own. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Chief Samuel Obuku, Managing Director, NDDC.